Okay, so in 5.3, um, well, the book calls it the justification of statistical techniques, but we're just going to look at a couple different ways for analyzing um, the data that we collect um, when we conduct a sample. That's all this is really talking about. So the first way we want to do this is with a visual, and that's with a box and whisker diagram or a box plot. And with a box plot, we're going to take five numbers, or our five number summary, and plot those in order to show where the bulk of our data lies. So this five number summary is the minimum and all four quartiles. So Q1, Q2, which is the median, Q3, and Q4, which is the maximum. So we're going to show those on our box plot in basically the order that they appear, right? It makes sense to show this in numerical order. So the minimum Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So what does this do? Well, this is actually drawn to scale, which is important, right? So these are going to always be drawn to scale. So I always want to include some sort of number line below. So maybe I have some sort of right regular interval here. I don't know, maybe these are like tens. So that way I actually show in space, in along this number line, where the data is spread out. Right? You can see that there's a pretty wide um, spread of data between my quartiles, right? But my max and min aren't that far off from the rest of the data set. So what am I really showing here? I'm showing two big things. Um, first of all, it's a box and whisker diagram. So appropriately, there is a box and two whiskers. And then from this box and whisker plot, we can see the IQR pretty clearly. And then if I kind of extend this down, because I'm running out of room, I can see the range pretty clearly. And that's what we're really getting at with this box and whisker diagram, is showing me a visual to show how compact most of the data is, right, between that Q1 and Q3, and then how far out our min and max is. And what this does is it really helps us see the difference um, between the IQR and the range. Um, so again, box plots should be drawn to scale. The other important things is that, we'll talk about outliers in a minute. Um, sometimes a box plot will show outliers as isolated plotted points. So we'll show For example, if this minimum here is an outlier, we would actually show it as an individual point and then show the next point that's not an outlier as our whisker. And what this does is just to be more accurate, even more accurate, right? To say, well, clearly our minimum is not representative of, of the rest of the data set, so let's show this on its own. Um, IB, however, does not, or at least our book does not seem to show this. Um, so you don't really have to worry about that right now, but if you were to read like a statistical study, um, then you may come across that type of, um, that type of representation. So just so you're aware. So those are box plots. Um, the outlier is a great segue actually. So outliers are really just extreme values, right? We know this. And they often skew our um, measures of central tendency and um, dispersion. We can actually formally define an outlier. I'll say x is an outlier if and only if two things are true. One of two things are true. x is either greater than or equal to 
Q3 plus one and a half times the IQR, or it's less than or equal to Q1 minus one and a half times the IQR. So what does this all mean? So these are my two big tests here, right? And you see that this one and a half IQR pops up both times. That's our cutoff, right? If I, I find my IQR, <clears throat> I find one and a half times the IQR, and um, I want to check, right? Do I have any data points that fall beyond this point? And that's the way we're going to formally define something to be an outlier, right? I like to think about it, again, as... Um, I lost my train of thought, um, as kind of my cutoff point, my boundary point. So we're actually going to see this with our example below. This is the data set that we talked about in 5.2. Um, I've come up with the five number summary already, just so we have um, some time saved. And I'm going to start by making my box plot. So I'm going to draw in my number line, and again, that should be drawn to scale, so maybe I'll just count by twos here. I like to start drawing these with my box first, just to kind of organize myself somewhere. So Q1 is one, Q2 is two, Q3 is three. So I'm just gonna connect all those, and there's my box. I'm gonna draw my whiskers, so my minimum is zero and my maximum is 10. And then it's usually a good idea to go back through and label these points either as just min Q1, Q2, Q3 max, or your alternative is you could actually write in what these numbers are. And this is something I would recommend doing if maybe you have a wider scale, so it's harder to tell exactly where each of these five numbers fall. Well, the other thing I want to do, I'll kind of talk about this um, alternate method that I talked about before, right? So let's check for outliers. Are there any outliers? And my gut might be that this 10 is an outlier because you see how far away it is from my box and if you think about the width of the box this is clearly way more than one and a half the size of the box so let's find our iqr our iqr is q3 minus q1 so it's two and one and a half times two is three right so anything that is if i think about extending this number line out farther so maybe like negative two and then i want to go out I'll extend just to be fair, but I guess I don't really need to over here. But I think about one and a half times the IQR out from either direction, right, from Q1 or Q3. So my kind of cutoff range, I'll do this in like a color or something, is three units away from Q1, so that's going to bring me to negative two, and three units away from Q3, which is going to bring me to six. All right, so this is kind of my safe zone, kind of my non-outlier zone. That's not an official term. I just made that up. Anything beyond that zone is an outlier. So do I have any points in the data set that do that? Well, just to kind of formalize it, x either needs to be greater than q3 plus 3 or less than q1 minus 3, right? So my data points either need to be bigger than 6 or less than negative 2. And absolutely I do, right? 10 is an outlier. So we would want to consider that. And um, as I said before, so I'm just going to move this over so I can show you what I was talking about earlier. Whoops, copy this. This would be a case um, that I said before where we would actually maybe consider showing that outlier as an isolated point and then taking our next lowest value which is or sorry next highest value which is four and showing that as my whisker right so again this is not something that our book does 
but it's something that you may see depending on what you come across for like an IA or something. Um, all this does is gives us a much um, clearer picture and much more faithful picture of our data is to say, well, this 10, you know, is part of the data set, but is really not critical um, to the work that we're doing, right? This is not accurate, accurately representing the work that we're doing. Um, so there's kind of your crash course in working with a box plot. Always draw it to scale, show your five number summary, and check for outliers. This is actually something I can do on my GDC as well. Um, if I go to stat and edit, you can see that I already have the data entered in. Um, and the first thing I need to do to show this box plot on my um, calculator is to go to second stat plot and make sure that one of my stat plots are on, um, which I've already done. And I can just press enter to toggle that on and off. Um, and I actually have two choices for my uh, box plot, right? I have my standard one that doesn't show the separate outliers. So I can just kind of go over there and press enter and select that. Um, so if I press zoom stat to make sure everything fits, there's my box plot. Um, this again might be particularly useful for an IA so you can actually kind of take your screenshots um, and show your data more accurately. Um, I also, you saw that if I go back to my stat plot, I have the option, whoops, that shows the outliers. So I can do second, whoops, I can do zoom stat again. Get, whoops, there we go. Um, and you can see that the outlier is now shown as an isolated point, and then my next highest value is shown as the whisker. So just an extra thing that you can do um, using the calculator to really check your work um, and also use the calculator to its fullest capability.